Hey and welcome to this tutorial on the Holzapfel Gasser Ogden model, the HGO model. Um, the HGO model is a very popular anisotropic hyperelastic model that was developed in order to study the nonlinear response of biomaterials, specifically arteries. And um, it's a built in feature in Abacus, and it happened to be a really good model and versatile model, and that's why I often use it for other applications as well. Um, so, as it was derived for biomaterials, it's obviously very useful for those kinds of materials. But you can also use this kind of anisotropic hyperelastic model for reinforced rubbers and plastics, typically fiber reinforced materials where you have a preferred orientation uh, in the material that gives the response a different behavior in that uh, orientation. You can also have multiple preferred orientations in this, this model where you dis describe uh, the mechanical properties of uh, fibers uh, in the material in that way. It doesn't have to be real fibers, it could be virtual fibers uh, that sort of has a preferred orientation of the poly uh, polymer microstructure. Uh, so it can also be used for composites because of all of that. Um, and the final reason why I really like this model is that it's versatile enough that you can use it as a building block when you work with uh, viscoplastic material models. So, um, it's, it's uh, one of the things where when you work with viscoplastic materials, you need both an anisotropic hyperelastic representation and an anisotropic viscous viscoplastic representation. Today, I'm simply going to talk about the, uh, the hyperelastic behavior and we'll talk about and cover the viscoplastic response in some other videos in the future. So let's talk about the HGO model specifically. Uh, it's um, it's sort of thinks of the material as consisting of a matrix and then a set of discrete fibers. So the energy function psi here is uh, consists of two parts that are added together. It has an isotropic response, which could be any hyperelastic material model that you typically use. Could be any Hookian, a, a Gantt model, or whatever model you like. And then on top of that, you add an anisotropic hyperelastic representation of the fiber contribution to the material. Um, so that's how it uh, is uh, developed. In the original work, well, Hosafel, Gasser, and Ogden, they used two fiber families of collagen fibers uh, that they wanted to study. And um, specifically, these are the equations that they used. Uh, so it may look a little messy here, but let me just talk about the details a little bit. So the isotropic hyperelastic behavior. Here's the energy function on the left hand side. This, as you can see, is a Neo-Hookian hyperelastic model, um, which is incompressible. So this was originally developed for incompressible uh, arteries. And then it's an anisotropic uh, contribution as well from the collagen fibers. And um, you'll see that there are two families of them specified by the invariants I4 and I6. So I4 is really the stretch of fiber family one, and I6 is the stretching component of the fiber family two. And uh, if you use this energy function here, you give uh, a, a nice and convenient uh, stress representation of, of this biomaterial. It has one particular feature uh, that was specifically built into it, that at small strains, the fibers don't contribute very much to the stiffness, but they kick in in a very strong way, in an exponential way, at larger stretchers, at fiber stretches. The invariants, I1 is the traditional invariant that is used in hyperelasticity. I4 and I6 are defined in this way, and this is important. There is uh, basically the stretches of the fiber orientation. So you need to specify when you work with this model, the orientation, the, uh, the vector of the fibers that you want to represent. So I1 here is the initial vectorial direction of the fibers, and A2 is the initial vectorial direction of the second fiber family. So then that's the whole description of this anisotropic hyperelastic model. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the, the stress equations that you actually calculate. If you're interested in those, those uh, equations, you should take a look at my book, Mechanics of Solid Polymers, where I cover some of the derivations uh, of the uh, stresses from the energy functions. Um, Abacus has also decided to implement the HGO model. It's one of the built-in features. And um, 
What Abacus often do, do, does is that they, they change, modify the model a little bit. So, so they took the basic framework of, from the original HEO paper and they made a few changes to it. Um, they, they made it compressible, as you can see here. It's a traditionally Hookian uh, energy function. And then um, they specified an arbitrary number of fiber families. So you can have more than two or three, whatever you like. And finally, they put this, uh, these brackets on this, uh, which means that the quantity with inside the brackets becomes zero if the argument is zero or negative. So this means that in the Abacus implementation, the fibers don't have any stiffness in compression, but in the original paper, they do. And finally, there is a, a term here, uh, the E term, the energy term, um, is given by this equation down here. So it's a uh, hyperelastic uh, isotropic response, and then it's a response uh, from the fibers I4 in this uh, representation here. And kappa in this equation is dispersion. So if kappa is equal to zero, then this, this E variable becomes the same as the original Holzapfel gasser ogden uh, equation. So there's a full contribution of the fibers. But if k, the k is equal to one third, then this second term cancels out and the energy becomes fully isotropic. So if the dispersion variable k allows you to tweak how much, how, how strong the fibers contribute versus uh, how much the matrix contributes. So it's a second vari variable that has been in introduced that way. So to summarize, the original paper was incompressible, two fiber families, both stiffness, intention, and compression. In Abacus, you can have more fiber families, uh, no stiffness in compression, and you have this dispersion parameter that you can specify. You can always make it zero if you like, uh, but you can also make it a little bit less uh, strong influence of the fibers and a little bit more matrix in that way. Um, but there are other ways to handle the HGO model or extend it in other ways. And I've done a lot of work in this area. I developed a model that I called the holzapfel gasser ogden bergstrom model, and this is now built into the PolyUmod library. So this is the version of the, the HEO model that's built into the, the PolyUmod 3 network viscoplastic model, the TNV model. And you can see the equation here looks very similar to the Abacus version of it. Uh, I selected for, for this case to not use a near Hookian hyperelastic model, but the Yo hyperelastic model. The Yo hyperelastic model is more versatile, works at larger strain, and therefore I thought was be a better choice. So that's the, uh, the main difference between the TMV representation of the HGO model and the Abacus version of it. Uh, but in specialized cases, sometimes it's very useful to have an even more freedom and capability of this type of model. So in the parallel network model, that's part of the PolyU mod library, uh, you can also specify a few more things. You can specify how stiff are the fibers in compression versus tension? Uh, in the HGO, Abacus version of it, there, there is no stiffness in compression. But in certain cases, clearly in fiber reinforced composite materials, you can have situations where the fibers do contribute even in compression. So that's something you can specify. And even better, you can also specify in this version of the HGO model, um, the stiffness of each fiber family. So you have uh, up to three fiber, in this case, actually up to six fiber families. You can specify the stiffness parameters for each fiber family individually, which is something you can't do uh, with the Abacus version or the original paper. Uh, so that can be very useful in some cases where you have uh, anisotropic materials with interesting properties. Um, what I want to do next is to talk about and demonstrate a little bit how this works in practice. So, I'm going to demonstrate using M calibration how you can work with the Abacus HGO model. So, um, let's just select the material model. I go to the set material model. I scroll down to Abacus Hyper, Abacus Holzapfel Gasser Ogden, and I say OK. And uh, here are the parameters. And you'll see that these, the first two parameters are the neo Hookian parameters. Then we have three parameters to give the fiber stiffnesses. K1 is the, the stiffness, K2 is the nonlinearity of the stiffness, and kappa is the dispersion. And then you have A1, A2, and A3. These are fiber directions. 
Uh, so in this case, you are uh, allowed to have up to three different fiber orientations, fiber families, and you specify these fiber uh, vectors here. So to use this, let's try it out. I'm going to create a virtual test case using mCalibration. So I'm going to set uh, the type to virtual. I'm going to add a uniaxial tension with a given strain rate to a engineering strain of 0 0.5. Okay, great. And then I'm going to make sure this is now tension in the one direction. So that's the first case. I'm going to uh, pick a good color for this. The first one I'm going to make uh, red and dashed. I will make it red and solid. How about that? And I'm going to call this, uh, pressing F2 on the keyboard, I'm going to say tension in the one direction. Uh, and then I'm going to duplicate this little case. I'm going to create a tension in the two direction. So I'm going to simulate tension in two orthogonal directions. So we can see if the response is isotropic or anisotropic. We can keep the definition of our segment. But I have to switch the loading mode now to tension in the two direction. I want to change the color so we can see the different colors. And I guess we'll make both solids. Here's a blue. If I run this now once, we'll see we get two lines. In fact, the, the stiffness response in uniaxial tension is slightly different between the one and the two directions. Which one is higher? Well, it's slightly stiffer in the one direction. Does that make sense? We'll take a look at the parameters here, right? We have a matrix response in both directions. And then we have fibers with a certain stiffness, but the fibers are only active in the one directions. So we have fibers in the one direction, so when we pull on this in the one direction, we will have a slightly stiffer response. This makes perfect sense. If I increase K1, which is the stiffness of the fiber, if I make it 0 0.9 and I run this, we'll see that the difference between the two directions increases, obviously, because the fibers now contribute even more, in this case, in the one direction. Uh, so that's very cool. Um, what if we change the, the orientation here? So we have fibers now in the one direction. If I make this vector zero, that means there is no fibers, and I make it, uh, well, I can make it one down here. So then I would define this as the fiber. It should not change the graph because the fibers are still in the one direction. But I could make it like this. Now this fiber definition is acting in the y direction, the two direction. So we're on this. Now we switch the order. We'll see now the stiffer fiber direction, the stiffer stress is in the two direction and not the one direction, simply because we switched this one in this, this way. So that's kind of how you work with the whole Sapful Gasser Ogden model. You can define the orientations based on the microstructure. You use M calibration to find the actual parameters to describe the behavior. And then you need experimental data. So you would do tension tests, compression tests, whatever test you think is appropriate. But you certainly need to do them in multiple directions in order to find out what these parameters would be. So you specify it, you run calibration, and that gives you your calibrated material model. So that's how you work with the Abacus, Holzapfer, Gaston, Ogden model. Um, just to quickly mention it, um, the T uh, Polymod TNV model also has the Holzapfer model, as I talked about in the theory earlier. I'm going to switch this to be Holzapfer, Gaston, Ogden, Bergstrom. I say OK. And then you have the Ogden parameters here, and then you have the K1. Here's the K parameters in, in the individual fibers, right? In direction one, two, and three. This is the dispersion, and here it is for fibers in the different directions. So you can run this too, and you'll see that it's stiffer in the one direction in this case, because we only gave fiber stiffnesses in the one direction, and two and three directions don't have stiffness. Um, so that's how it works. You can export it once you're done and put it into uh, Abacus. If you use the PolyUmod version, you can also put this into ANSYS, Alice Dyna, uh, and many other finite element solvers. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.